Hoggy, good to see you, mate. We're here in London's Brightling's flagship store. Six Nations is upon us. How are you feeling and how's the pop? Feel very excited for it. I think for us coming off the, the back of a, a decent enough autumn campaign. Um, you know, boys are buzzing to be back in camp and and ready to crack on with, you know, my favourite tournament uh, in, in World Rugby. So, uh, you know, a hugely exciting time. I was going to ask that. It seems from the outside it's the fans' most favourite tournament and there's a player it seems the same as well. Is it genuinely the best tournament that you look forward to playing in and what makes it so special? A hundred percent because it's only really the international tournament that you, you, you play in other than, you know, outside the World Cup. Um, to have it in the, the kind of home nations, uh, a tournament that you were brought up watching. I used to go around here then everywhere watching it. I remember my parents taking me to, to Murrayfield back when I was a kid. Um, and to be a part of it now is, is incredibly special. So I remember being a kid wanting to play for Scotland and to actually be doing it is uh, pretty surreal, to be honest. I grew up watching Six Nations and the heroes. Who were your heroes growing up watching Six Nations? I had a few. I had a few from a Scottish point of view. I love Chris Patterson. Uh, I find it you know, very uh, special to be in a position to be coached by him. Um, he comes into camp every every week and I absolutely love him. Great character to be around. Another one for mine was Brian O'Driscoll and it's pretty strange to have played alongside him on the, on the Lions tour in 2013 for me. You know, I was in awe of him. Um, you know, going into that camp and to have an opportunity to play alongside was something that will, will live me forever. But I used, to, I used to love watching all the different teams play, all the different players, learning new bits and pieces. Um, as I say, to be a part of it is incredibly special. I agree with you. Murrayfield is one of my favourite stadiums. What's it like as a captain now? You obviously come in as a youngster, now you're captain leading the boys out. What, what are you thinking of and what's going through your mind when you leave the dressing room, you come out the tunnel and then the stadium opens up in front of you with all its noise? What What's going through your head at that moment? I'm still a youngster, Sam. Still a youngster. <laughs> you're, um, not, you're not. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, yeah, look for me. It's it's absolutely tremendous because, as I say, when I was a kid and I used to go to Murrayfield, I used to experience the atmosphere from from a, pa a fan's point of view. But to to be in a position to lead your country, you know, you'll have experienced it as well. But it's that there's it's such an incredible feeling, a special feeling because you've got um, the hopes and dreams of the nation on your shoulders. You've got all the boys that are there to back you up. You're going to inevitably going to war with your best mates. Um, and for me, it's, it's, it's absolutely tremendous. We come out the tunnel, we come out the changing room, we turn right to the tunnel and you, and you get to, to see the far side of the stand. And as soon as you run out, uh, no matter how many times I've done it, we get you know the flame burners right next to us. Every time we go past it, I always get a fright. But um, no, as soon as you go out there, you get the, you get the atmosphere, you get everybody screaming um, your, your, your name and supporting the boys. Uh, you sing your national anthem, which for me, there's, it's an unbelievable feeling. The second, the second verse for me, we have no, no music. You just hear all the vocals. Um, it's absolutely tremendous. Did you play for Scotland with the thought you want to get all the way to the top, or were you sort of just like one game at a time kind of guy? A bit of both. Obviously, your your, your long term goals are to to make a difference in everything that you're doing. Um, short term goals is you're literally concentrating on the game that's coming up. But for me, representing Scotland, and I've done it for for so long. I'm still the kid that's living a dream and I absolutely love it. I'll, I'll never take the, the opportunity to represent my country for granted. It's something that means a hell of a lot to me. To now be in a, a position to captain the side, um, I never thought I'd ever be in a position to do it. Like I've always been involved in a, le a leadership group side of things, but I was always kind of thought to myself as a leader in the way that I play. I want to go out there and I make things happen, express myself, have some fun. Um, but to be doing it 10 years later, and an opportunity to, to lead your country is incredibly special. Rugby boys love being part of a team environment, similar to Brightling's squad on a mission. What is it about being part of a team that's all going towards the same goal that you love being part of? I think ex exactly that. You've all you've got a goal within the, the week that you want to go out there and you want to, to win every single game you've got, but literally the Monday leading up to the Tuesday leading up to the, the game at the weekend, you're only ever focused on how you can benefit everything from, from a team perspective and you know, when you work incredibly hard during the week to, to achieve your goal and you do it at the weekend, there's there's no better feeling. And the satisfaction you get individually is is quality, but the satisfaction you get as a, as a team is, is even more special. And I think when you put all the hard work and effort into it and you get the results that you're looking for, um, it makes everything worthwhile. You and Brightlin actually go back eight, nine years. Why is Brightlin a special watch brand for you? 
it was the first ever watch I had, to be honest, because we had, uh, you know, we went on tour together in 2013 with, with the Lions and um, we, we, we got a watch on the back of that with, with our cap number, with our initials, with a badge on the back of it. And yeah, it was it was like a massive moment to, to represent the Lions and to always look back when you when you put the watch on and you just think back to the memories that you created on and off the field and the special bond you've got with, with players, you know, like yourself and... Um, yeah, anytime you anytime you look down, you just you always kind of have a little chuckle to yourself about the things you got up to. So, uh, very very special watch for me. What kind of watch guy are you? What what watches do you like? Um, you know, for, for me, like I, um, I, I try my best to to look the best I possibly can. <laughs> I try and dress smart and I make myself do feel you? good. <laughs> I, I try, I try, I try. I try. <laughs> <laughs> not not bad for a hoik boy. Anyway. Um, <laughs> But yeah, Luke, I think it's just the, the kind of the detail that you can have on on your wrist. Just like for me, I'm always a a big fan of you know when people go around and you, you check what they're wearing and um, you know for me, I just I just love love being a part of it and uh, having having a nice brightener on your on your wrist is, is very very special indeed. When you go all the way back to your first cap, what was going through your head then? Because you probably weren't far out of school then, so you're a young, real <laughs> young man. You know, you were in your teens playing, wasn't it? What, what was going yeah. through your mind then? It was it was an unbelievable feeling because I remember the the week before uh, my first cap I played for it was my first first campaign of all the Scotland but I played against the England Saxons the week before um, and you know played relatively well uh, watched the boys play against England the day after I remember on a Tuesday Tuesday morning Andy Robinson put the flip chart up and my name was on the bench I was like now we're into it here we go um, and I got my first cap in Wales. How do you want to be remembered, and what would mission accomplished look like for you? Uh, it's a difficult one because when you listen to what other sportsmen have said, or what other um, people in business, finance, whatever it may be, what they, what they want to leave behind, um, do I want to leave a legacy behind? Yes and no. I don't want to be remembered for um, you know the achievements that are done from an individual point of view because it's very very selfish when you're playing a team a team sport a legacy for me um I, w- I want people to look back at me and say that somebody that they gave their all at every opportunity that that maximized um the talent that i have and to be in a position to do it with a smile on my face i think you get the best the best person the best player when you do things with a smile on your face and um yeah as, as long as i work hard and I get I get out of it what I want um, and what the team wants, and that's all I want to be be remembered for. I don't want to be remembered for the accolades that you picked up. Obviously, it's nice, but hard work and, and doing it with a big smile is is all I want. Well, I think you are uh, Scotland Lions and Six Nations great. Thanks for your time today, and all the best for the rest that's of Six lovely. Nations. Thanks, Cheers, mate.